you've heard any of the segments that I've filmed on teacher training, you know that I believe it's really important that we treat everyone with respect. One of the areas in the Montessori community that I believe we do need to improve is treating with respect those who are learning to become Montessori educators. We talk about the inner teacher inside of the child. We talk about respecting that as we let them do their work, not interrupting them. Let them learn in their way. I believe we need to do that with adults as well. And one of those pieces is helping you to understand why you do the things that you do. Why do we use this material this way? Why have I chosen what I call some second generation Montessori math materials instead of the traditional materials? So to start this segment on fractions, I'm going to give you an example. Now this would potentially be an example you could use with your class, maybe if you're teaching upper elementary, nine to 12 year olds or adolescents, but mainly it's just to let you think about how we need to make sure children are truly mastering fractions. When I give math lessons to a group of children, I always do a check at the beginning. Usually it's visual, so there's somewhere between one and three written problems on a board at the rug. When they come to the lesson, they are asked to do those problems on their own. If they're able to do the problems, then they may not need to stay for the lesson. Depending on the class, depending on the children, I may set up the procedures, uh, the customs of math lessons a little differently from group to group and class to class. But it's a way for everyone to see where they are before they do the lesson. This is kind of what I'm doing in this segment as well. So I want you to imagine that you have a recipe for a salad. For a fruit salad and this recipe is set to serve six. You want to make the recipe just for yourself and your husband, your sweetheart, your business partner, whatever. So you need to cut this recipe down to one-third the original ingredients. So I'm going to ask you to do that. I'm going to give you the recipe just verbally. So you need three cups of apples, chopped apples, you need one and a half cups of chopped celery, fine chopped, sliced, however you like it, and one and a half cups of walnuts. Now, with this salad, there's also a dressing. The dressing has nine tablespoons of mayonnaise with three tablespoons of fresh squeezed lemon juice. Now, if you're familiar with Waldorf salad, you know that's what we're making. A little bit of salt and pepper and you're done. Now, if you're one who likes to add the grapes, then you would need one and a half cups of grapes. So, what is your recipe for only two people if that serves six? Now, I would hope most of you were able to do that in your head pretty easily. In order to take one and a half and divide it by three, you should be able to visualize that one and a half cups of things is three sets of a half a cup. If you weren't able to do that, we'll talk about that in a little while. Obviously, something like nine tablespoons should be easy to do. You just divide it by, by three. So if you did this correctly, you know that for setting up this recipe for only two people, you would need a half a cup of chopped walnuts, a half a cup of chopped celery, half a cup of grapes if you're going to put those in, and one cup of chopped apples. You would need three tablespoons of mayonnaise and one tablespoon of lemon juice and then your salt and pepper. Now the reason that I give you this example is to give you an experience of the way we want children to be able to work with fractions. This is a fairly simple example. It does take a little bit of doing, but if you weren't able to do that, you may need to look at your own ability to work with fractions in a practical way. Now in a moment, I'm going to show you how if I were doing that as a setup problem with the children, how I would then demonstrate it with the materials. What I'm going to encourage you to do is you think about the way that you are going to set up your fraction curriculum within your classroom is how are you going to give real life experience? How are you going to help the children to understand that these are things they're going to use for real? And how are you going to make sure that the way you are teaching fractions is a way that's going to help the children to think about it in a way that they will be able to use them practically in the real world?
One of the ways that the way that I approach fractions is different than many Montessori trainings is the fact that I prefer a rectangular model for the fraction materials. You'll see a lot of different reasons why this is valuable. What you see here that I've got in my hand is the fraction chart from Activities for Learning. They have different formats of this. Um, the one that I have, I'm not sure if it's even still available. It's a magnetic puzzle, so the, the pieces can be moved off of, of something um, magnetic. I've used um, metal placemats, and this is a little board that I believe is a maybe a miniature bulletin board, but it's something that I got at a thrift store, so I'm not entirely sure. But what these are, are a way to work with fractions in a rectangular model. What you will notice immediately is that it's very easy to see equivalence. You can look at the one half and the two fourths, and if you've worked with them even a few times, you would just at a glance be able to see that equivalent, that one half is exactly the same as two fourths. Now I wanted to give that introduction before we start working with this material that I call the Fraction Stacker. It is something that I have purchased from Allison's Montessori. I'm not sure if it's available from other places or not. What I will say is this is a material that's very attractive to the children. You can certainly see why that would be the case. I have mixed feelings about the colors. I have considered repainting it so that perhaps everything was orange. Orange is a color coding that I use for fraction materials, cards and such in the classroom. But at this point, it's in the original state in which I got it. I will say that the children enjoy it very much and it can be a distraction. The first thing that needs to be taught when you give this presentation is to use the material in such a way that it makes little or no noise. This is a carryover from the work with the dimensional materials in the three to six classroom. This is a material that can be used for children in their last year, uh, possibly earlier in the three to six classroom, but it is something that I found that is very, very useful, particularly in um, lower elementary for ages six to nine. Now, there's of course a lot of different ways that you can use this. One is by helping the children understand the nature of fractions. This is one. This is the entire piece, and you can then show them that this is the same as one item being broken into several pieces. I help the children to understand in two different ways, as you'll see in a moment, that when we talk about fractions, we may be talking about portions of one thing. So this would be one thing, perhaps one carrot, and this would be the two portions, half a carrot, half a carrot. If we put them back together, we would have one carrot. So this is the idea that fractions are parts of one whole, parts of a single thing that you break into smaller pieces. Two pieces, three pieces, four pieces, six pieces, eight pieces, 10 pieces, and 12 pieces. I would not use this as the only material because it makes it seem like there's no such thing as one fifth or one seventh, which is not something we want the children to think. The reason I'm showing this is because of the way that I use it to demonstrate that that is not the only thing that fractions are. Fractions are not just pies and pizzas. Fractions are parts of sets and they are a subset of division. If you are working with fractions, you are working with division. Now, I would not at this point explain to a child that this is one divided by four, but that is something that I would explain not too far down the line. Now, what you see here are little lucite cubes. As I said, I love the rectangular model of the fractions, and you'll see why in just a moment if you haven't already. I have 21 here, I used to have 24. That's an ideal number of pieces to work with what we're going to do here. 
for one reason, 24 can be divided into so many different um, sets really nicely, but 21 will work for us right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one out, so I have a set of 20. I don't have to start with that. I could even start with a set of 8. So I'm going to have 8 cubes, and I'm going to demonstrate that besides dividing entire pieces into fractions, we may divide sets of items into fractions. And I can do it by giving each fractional part an equal share. So 8 distributed out means 1 fourth of 8 is 2. Now this, if the child has had the divisional work with the golden beads, should be familiar and should help imply, without you even saying anything, the relationship between fractions and division. Now you can see why this would be attractive. I, as I set it up for the larger quantity that I'm going to do, I'm going to tell you that this is not something the children can just explore freely and get fractions. I've had experience with that because of some of the different classrooms I've taught in over the last few years. And one of the things that I've found is if a child is not given the written work with fractions, if they're not working with the symbols, if they're not working with the idea, that this number on the bottom tells us how many pieces we have broken something into, and the number at the top tells us how many of those pieces are being represented, they're not going to gain the understanding that they need. So, how do we take 1 fourth of 20? This is the same thing. Oh my goodness, this is going to take a long time. If I just put these in one at a time, it's going to take a long time. Do you think I could know I could put more in than that? Surely there's enough for everyone to have two more, don't you think? I think so too. This is moving children away from counting. One of the reasons that I am so fond of the models that Joan Cotter has set up is that they help the children to see things. If you've got children in the group that are paying attention and have some good visual abilities developed, they're already going to be telling you, oh, you can put two more in each one. And that's exactly what we can do. So I'm going to go ahead and do those. And then you can see why this has some, oops, even if it messes up, it's still kind of a, a fun thing that is attractive to the children. Now, it may be that you don't have this fraction stacker material. If not, there are some things that are pretty easy to obtain that can give somewhat the same experience of what we were just showing to help the children understand that you can take a fraction of a quantity, not just a fraction of one single item, such as a pie, a cookie, a, a carrot, whatever. So this is one of those little mini ice cube trays that tend to come in the little refrigerators that are, are used for dorm rooms and things like that. I have found that you will see them very frequently in thrift stores. This is a little lipstick organizer that, again, I think I got it from a thrift store, maybe some, someplace online, but it can be used in a very similar way. Now, before I go on, I'd like you to tell me how many cubes I have here there's a good chance that you are able to instantly tell that there were 12. Why is that? Because the mind can see up to about five or six sets at a time, and then you know that six sets of two is 12. If I had just a random array like this, you would not have been able to tell how many objects I had. This is another reason I like to work with rectangular objects for all quantities and especially for fractions because you can just see what we're going for. But of course, you could then 
divide it up like this, so 12 divided by 1, etc. But you can do it in other ways as well. If you have this, you can block it off and say, we're not going to use all of this. We're just going to divide into six sections. So 12 divided by 6, and you can do it one at a time if the children aren't ready for that, but if they are able to see those quantities, they would be able to tell you that 12 divided by 6 is 2. Now I'm going to show you how I have divided up this little container with the rubber band. I'm big on using rubber bands to help illustrate things. So this is a little container. I think it was for supplements or something like that for traveling. And it had four sections, has four sections. But what I've done is I divided it in half. So what is one half of 12? Oh yeah, there are a couple of little sections there, but we still need to make sure we have the same quantity here and here. We know we can put four in both of them. Okay, so we've used up eight. Now, I'm going to act more like I'm being a child here. Okay, I can fit that in. And I now can see that one half of 12 is six. Oh, now there's something interesting going on there. I can even see what one fourth of 12 is because these are divided in to those sections. So I can see that one fourth of 12 is three. Now, the last piece that I want to show you with this is you then, if you're working with cubes, don't even have to have a container to see some of what's going on. If you arrange the cubes where they are in sets of three this way, you can instantly see one third of 12 is four. One fourth of 12 is three. One half of 12 is six. This is the reason why I love to work with cubes. Wooden one centimeter cubes are very, very easy to, to find. These are something that I had because I, I purchased some Lucite cubes from a, a company when I was, was getting other things um, for um, my school. And I happen to have them and they are attractive. The children are attracted to them because of their appearance. So here's 21 cubes. Now I can even explore that. I can do research with something like this. How am I going to find out what one third of 21 is? Well, that's pretty simple. I need to set it up in three equal sets. Hmm, now because I'm making a rectangle, as long as I make my rectangle three across, I'm going to have it that way. Now you can see this again is moving children away from counting. This is very, very important. It's very, very helpful for them to start to see quantities. Another thing that I'll do is I will give little spaces after fives. So you can see this is a set of five cubes and there's two more. So what is one third of 21? It's seven. Five and two is seven. And the children can start to see this kind of relationship if they're working with materials that create rectangles and create that experience for them. Now let's put these away and go back to the fraction stacker.